How's it going guys, Lee Cypher here. I hope you're all doing great. It has been over a year since the last time I uploaded a video, but hopefully now I can upload at least a video a week. Now in today's video, we'll be doing something a little bit different. We'll be doing the Volunit Rum from the awesome TryHackMe platform. TryHackMe is a platform on which you can practice cybersecurity and improve your technical skills in different categories. Now in order to connect to their network, you need to navigate to access, then download your OpenVPN configuration file. After you download it, just type in your terminal, OpenVPN, and your OpenVPN configuration file. We will attempt the Volunit ROM in this video. This ROM is BHP based at ATD here. Now let's deploy the machine and start hacking. By the way, you can also use the attack box if you don't want to use OpenVPN. Once the IP address is shown to you, copy it and do just a small bing first to see if the machine is up or not. But before we do that, let's add the domain volunet.thm to our Cetera host file. Now ping the machine to see if it's up or not. Once the machine is up, start an AMAP scan to see what ports are open. My flags here, dash SS for TCB sense scan, dash A for aggressive scan, dash ON for normal output, and store the output in a file called mmapscan.log. And finally, the IP address of the machine, or the domain that points to that IP address. After the scan is done, you will see the, what ports are open. Um, SSH on port 22 and Apache HTTP on port 80. Now after the scan, I did directory fuzzing using Fuff. By the way, if you don't know about Fuff, it's an awesome fuzzing tool for pretty much everything related to web fuzzing. To install it, just Google Fuff GitHub and just use Golang to install it. If you don't have Golang, install it just by typing in your terminal app get install Golang. Now to fuzz directories with fuff just use the dash w flag for word list. I will be using the infamous common.txt word list here. Then the dash u for URL and finally put the keyword fuzz in the place that you want to fuzz. After directory fuzzing is finished, you won't find anything really interesting. So what we need to do now is virtual host fuzzing to find any other subdomains. Now in order to do that, we need a subdomain's word list. The best word lists out there, you can find them in Sackless word list repository. Go to discovery, then DNS. I will download the top 5,000 subdomain word list. After that, we will use Fafa again, but with the subdomain's word list. And we need to add the dash H flag for header and fuzz the host header like so. You will notice a lot of subdomains return the same response size, so filter those out with the dash fs flag. The tag subdomain here is a false positive. You can verify that by looking at the response size. Now we have one valid virtual host or subdomain here, which is Protocast, and it returns 401 unauthorized. But before we go any further, Let's add this subdomain to our etc. hosts file. As you can see here, HTTP basic authentication is required. So somehow we need to grab the username and the password from the server. Now if you go to the main domain and view the page source and scroll to the very bottom, we will find two JavaScript files. If you open the second one, you'll find it minified or obfuscated. So in order to de-obfuscate it, copy it and go to beautifier.io and paste it, then scroll down. You'll find a get parameter called referrer. If you try to test this parameter for local file inclusion vulnerability, you'll find it vulnerable. Now I need to grab the virtual host configuration file for Apache. This file is located in etc. Apache 2 sites enabled directory. After getting that file from the server, you will discover the location of the 
broadcast subdomain credentials. And here we have the username and an encrypted password. Based on experience, I know this is an MD5 crypt hash. We can use John the Ripper and the Rocky.txt borderless to crack it. Just paste that hash in a file and have John crack it. And there we go. Now let's log in with these credentials. After you log in, you will find our running service is Clip Bucket version 4. Doing a quick search exploit search, you will find it vulnerable to command injection on arbitrary file upload. Use the dash M option to copy the exploit file to your current working directory. Now since this subdomain requires authentication, we will need to modify this POC and add the credentials. But before we do that, we need a PHP reverse shell. If you have Kali running, you can copy a PHP reverse shell from user share web shells PHP directory. Open it with any text editor and change the IP address to your own IP address. And the port number, leave it as it is or change it if you want. Now run the exploit POC. And don't forget to supply the credentials with the dash U option. After you run the exploit, navigate to slash files directory, then photos, and you'll find the reverse shell script in the some subdirectories. Before you execute the reverse shell, make sure to have a Nick Cal listener with the port that you specified. After the reverse shell returns, upgrade it by spawning a TTY shell with Python 3. Then hit Ctrl Z to background the shell, then type sttyraw raw minus echo. Then FG. Notice when you type FG, it won't be displayed, but it'll still be written. Then enter twice, and finally export term equals xterm. Make sure to have term all caps. Now navigate to var backups directory. You'll find a compressed sh key. Copy the archive to a directory you can write to. In my case here, dev shm. Then you start to decompress it. Now when you cap that file, you will find it encrypted. So in order to decrypt it, copy it to your machine and use sh to john to convert it to a hash john can crack. After you get the password, make sure the sh key is only readable and writable only by you with chml 600 and the sh key. We'll SSH to the server with the user server management. When it prompts you for password, enter the password we got from the encrypted SSH key. After you log in, you'll find the user flag. Now to escalate our privileges to the root user, navigate to the var op directory and you'll find a backup bash script that is being executed by a cron job. When you review the code of that script, you'll find it vulnerable to wildcard injection. Google search a wildcard injection POC, and you'll find a detailed article about this vulnerability. But now we are interested in the POC. The first line here is just a reverse shell being written to a file called shell.sh. Before you run this payload, make sure your current working directory is where the file is being backed up. Now run the exploit POC and make sure to change the IP address and the port. Now have a Nick Cal listener running to catch the reverse shell when the script is executed by the cron job. And that's it. This was an awesome room. I enjoyed it a lot the first time I was doing it. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as well and found this write up useful. And stay tuned for the rest of the Volunet rooms. And please, if you found this video useful, like and subscribe. Trio helps the channel to grow. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.
Peace, guys.